In the past, I've built a few different flying machines from a radio-controlled SpaceX Starship to a drone controlled by reaction wheels. And more recently, a drone controlled by gas thrusters. But there's one suggestion I always receive, and that is, if you put the battery low on the drone for a lower center of mass, the drone will be more stable, like a pendulum. But does this really work? This video is sponsored by Wix. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash Tom Stanton to build your free website today. To test whether having a low center of mass on a drone increases its stability using a pendulum-like effect, we need to eliminate every other form of stability. So here I have a drone attached to a stick or a stick attached to a drone. Um, and I have two batteries mounted quite far down this stick. So it has a really low center of mass. Now on the drone itself, there is no form of stability uh, in the form of gyros and accelerometers. It's solely just producing thrust. So this should eliminate everything apart from this pendulum effect. Now I can control the throttle on the motors, but I have no directional control. So um, let's mount it on this mount and see whether it actually works. Now I'm mounting this at a slight angle, um, which is probably the best case scenario to see whether it does actually swing to level. So um, let's stand back and give it a test. Okay, drone pendulum test number one. Uh, crashed into the hedge. <laughs> Drone pendulum test number two. Ouch. <laughs> that was a hard hit. <laughs> okay, the drone seems to be holding up quite well. Going to run the test a few more times till we can make a solid conclusion. Or the drone breaks, obviously. But it um, doesn't seem like there's much of a pendulum effect so far. So I think I've made a rough conclusion from uh, those test flights. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the high speed footage and then we can analyze what's going on. So here is a high speed video of the drone as it flies along. And it seems to be maintaining a constant angle. In fact, we can plot an image of the drone at points along the flight and see that they all seem to be parallel. Now, this is a very small portion of the flight, so maybe it didn't have time to swing to a vertical position. And if I kept filming, it may eventually swing level. So here is another shot of the drone being held as if it were a pendulum to give you an idea of the time scale. It's clear that the drone should level itself before exiting the shot if the pendulum effect existed. But why is this? Let's look at how a pendulum works. A pendulum works by having a mass suspended below a pivot. And when the mass is moved to the side, it swings back to the center. Now, the pivot is always in a fixed position. And when the mass is moved to the side, the pull from gravity is offset from the pivot. This creates a torque which rotates the pendulum until the mass is back below the pivot. So for the drone to swing like a pendulum, the pull from gravity must be offset from the pivot point. Now, since gravity doesn't choose to pull at a random point on an object, we say that it acts at the center of mass, which is the same position at which the object balances. But where is the pivot point? By throwing an object into the air whilst giving it a spin, we can see that it rotates around its center, which makes sense if you've ever thrown a frisbee. If we add mass to one side of the object, it shifts the center of mass to that side. But what does this do when it's thrown into the air? It seems to be rotating around the new center of mass. And this is where the biggest misconception of drone stability originates from. It seems logical to assume that the drone pivots around its point of thrust and the mass falls down like a pendulum. But in fact, the pivot point and the center of mass are at the same position. Therefore, there is no torque produced and no rotation. If you try to fly a drone with a really low center of mass, all that happens is the drone's rotational inertia is increased meaning the flight controller must work harder to keep it under control, and well, it will probably crash. So why don't the propellers act the same as a pivot point on a pendulum? 
It's easier to visualise this by displaying the thrust as a fixed force acting on the drone. When the drone tilts, so does the line of thrust. Therefore, there is no correction torque and the thrust just launches it sideways. If we compare this to a tilted pendulum and display the pivot as a force acting directly upwards, it's clear that this isn't achievable by the propellers in their current mounted situation. Also, if we display the forces from gravity acting on the drone and the pendulum, it's clear that the forces acting on the drone are balanced about the pivot, therefore there is no rotation, whereas the pendulum has an imbalance and wants to rotate. When designing a drone or any kind of flying machine, I like to think of them as being in zero gravity. This forces you to uh, ignore any kind of pendulum uh, effects and actually focus on the forces produced around the pivot point or the centre of a mass. So for this next part of the video, I'm going to run through all of my previous uh, flying machine projects and hopefully explain the control theory behind them. Let's start with the electric ducted fan rocket designed to simulate the control of a SpaceX Falcon 9. It's essentially a large tube which uses thrust vectoring at the bottom for control. But where is the ideal centre of mass? If we label the thrust as a force acting at the bottom of the tube and rotate the thrust vector to one side, we can see that moving the mass to the top creates a large thrust offset from the centre of mass, therefore providing a greater control torque. If the centre of mass was at the bottom, the thrust vectoring would be useless as there is no offset from the centre of mass. So having the thrust vectoring far from the centre of mass makes it possible for this tube to maintain a controlled hover. Until the motor burns out. The next example is a radio controlled Chinook model. This doesn't fly anything like the real Chinook, but instead has thrust vectored propellers at the top of the craft, essentially being the reverse of the previous example. So here it is flying without the Chinook body. The motors are able to pivot around this point to vector the thrust for control. So where would the ideal centre of mass be? You would in fact be correct if you suggested lowering the centre of mass, as that will achieve a maximum thrust offset, not to get confused with the pendulum fallacy. And the final example is my recently built gas thruster drone. Because this drone has a thrust fixed in the centre, the thrust line is always going straight through the centre of mass, and therefore creates no torque and no rotation. Because of this, I chose to mount the battery at the top, as it was the only suitable place to mount it. If I had mounted it at the bottom, it wouldn't have made any difference to the stability as it's still in line with the thrust. It would simply shift the pivot point downward slightly. Therefore, the only way to control this craft is to use the high pressure jets on the arms to produce a force offset from the center of mass, causing the craft to rotate. So I hope this video has cleared up some misconceptions about drone stability. And if you'd like to read more about the subject, I've put together a website with some more information such as what is stability, what is control, and do aerodynamics play a role in this pendulum fallacy? I built the website using Wix, which is a free platform that allows you to build highly customizable, professional and robust websites. You can use the advanced drag and drop tools to create an information packed, smart looking website. Plus, Wix takes care of all the heavy lifting, like reliable hosting, custom domains, email marketing and more. So you can focus on your creativity. Its wide range of professional templates are customizable to fit your creative needs, whether you are a novice, business owner, or advanced designer. Wix is for you. Go to wix.com forward slash go forward slash Tom Stanton to sign up and build your free website today. Upgrade to a premium plan and get more bandwidth, more storage, a custom URL, and more. That does it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and want to see other crazy flying projects, click subscribe down below. A huge, huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters over on patreon.com for making these sorts of videos and projects possible. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.